Hey, it is Rachel Bailey. And I can tell you that one of the goals, one of the most common goals that I hear from parents is they want to increase their influence over their children so that their children actually listen to them. And they want to improve their relationship with their kids. So one of the first tools I immediately teach to parents who want to improve their influence and their relationship is to always start with the connection before you make a correction or set a boundary. The reality is that when humans feel safe, that's when they can more easily hear the correction. Or when they feel like they're in a, help, a positive space with you, that's when they're more likely to do the thing they don't feel like doing. So I teach this concept of connecting before correcting, but what I usually hear parents do is this very common thing that we all do, which is when we're trying to connect, we basically check this box of, I stated my child's perspective. And then we add the word, but. So here's what this sounds like. Think about if this is something that you do. We'll say something like, I know you want to buy that toy, but I told you before we came into the store that you couldn't have it. Or we say something like, I know you don't want to go to your sister's play, but in this family, we support each other. Or I know you don't want to go to sleep right now, but it's time for bed. So we kind of state their perspective, and then we use the word but. And I will tell you two reasons that that is not a true connection. Just stating someone's perspective does not show them that you actually care about their perspective. So just saying, I know you want to do this, isn't a true connection. The other problem with it is that as soon as you use the word but, not only have you not really made a true connection, but the word but undoes everything that you just said. So when you say, I know you don't want to go to your sister's play, but you're basically saying, I don't really care that you don't want to go to your sister's play. So what do you do instead? It's a very, very simple shift. The shift is instead of the using, using the word but, you use the word because. So I know you don't want to go to your sister's play because you'd rather go to your friend's house. You've been planning on going to your friend's house for a week now. Or, I know you don't want to go to bed because you're in the middle of watching a movie right now and you don't want to stop. The word because takes you one step further into their world, and it's really showing you not only do you understand what they're going through, but you care about what they're going through. And that is really what a true connection is about. It's not just understanding it, it's really being in there with them and showing them that you care about what they're going through. Now, this doesn't all of a sudden mean that you change your boundary just because you understand them a little bit better. You absolutely need to enforce your boundary. You've just started from a place of connection rather than a place of coming at them in anger or whatever it is that you're doing, which is probably not gonna make them listen to you. So when you are correcting their behavior, you just wanna still, instead of using the word but, you can use the phrase and, or the word and, and then you still wanna consider their perspective. So it could sound something like this. You don't go, want to go to your sister's play because you'd rather go to your friend's house. You've been planning that for a week. And in our family, we support each other in activities like this. So let's find another time that you can go to your friend's house that isn't the same night as your sister's play. So you're setting that boundary with the word and, and you're really still respecting their perspective. Again, you could do this with bedtime. You could say something like, you don't want to go to bed right now because you're right in the middle of watching a movie and you don't want to stop. And it's time for bed, so let's find another time when you can watch that movie. Now, the last thing I will say is that a connection is not all of a sudden going to get your child excited about your boundary. They're not all of a sudden going to say, you're right, I can watch this movie another time. That's a great suggestion. But what it does is that it actually shows your child that you care, and ultimately how they react is not in your control. And they're allowed to have emotions. They're allowed to be disappointed or frustrated when you set a boundary. Ultimately, what you're focusing on here is are you treating your child with respect? Because that is what's in your control. And when you are continually treating them with respect over and over, that's when you are ultimately going to improve your influence and your relationship in the long run. So if you want even more tips about how to figure out what to say in the moment that's really respectful and consistent with your values, I recommend my most recent episode of my podcast, at the time of this recording anyway, which is episode 19 of Your Parenting Long Game, where I'll actually teach you how to figure out what your values are and how to use that to respond in the moment to your child. If you have any questions about any of this, you can feel free to reach out to me at rachel at rachel-bailey.com. I look forward to seeing you again next time.